I'm going to say a few words about uh, marijuana today, known as cannabis. That's the genus name. Okay, so first, the structure of the plant. There are males and there are females. The male produces the pollen, like many other plants you may be aware of that produce pollen. The pollen fertilizes the female flower pistil, and then that's how the seed is produced. The seed grows then within the female flower and it's produced if it's fertilized. The people who like to use uh, marijuana for either medicinal, spiritual, or recreational purposes typically are looking for the female flower. And in many cases, um, they would like it where it's not pollinated, so it doesn't produce seed. Uh, although there is something to be said about a pollinated bud, perhaps, to say. There's also, uh, I've witnessed uh, hermaphrodites in the uh, genus where both the male and female parts are on the same plant. I've noticed how some plants grow with a hollow stem, very similar to bamboo in some respects. And then I also noticed a more solid stem, sort of the way a pine tree would be more solid. So it's very fascinating how uh, there's such diversity in many aspects of the plant. Now, when growing the plant, people today, uh, from my knowledge, they, there's multiple methods. Uh, you can, uh, I, I have personally grown from seed or using what they call cuttings, clones. If you have a developed plant, you can take cuttings and you can use those cuttings to grow out into new plants. And then they become very close, uh, closely similar to the, what they refer to as the mother plant that uh, they were taking from. And also nowadays people are using, uh, I guess what's called tissue culture. I'm not too familiar with that, but they actually go and they'll take small genetic samples from the plant and they'll grow it out like in a uh, petri dish and it's, it's pretty pretty vast uh, stuff going on. One word about uh, fertilizer and growing methods. Um, I uh, wonder or question if there are certain fertilizers that sort of trip the plant out. Like in other words, if you're growing with fertilizer X that maybe has EDTA in it, that's a chemical compound that's in a lot of foods today, and fertilizer. Imagine that that can trip the seed line, that the seeds that would be produced from that plant sort of get shifted in one direction. Whereas if you didn't use that and maybe they would shift or you use another chemical, you could shift it in any other variety of ways. So I say that as like a word of caution to anybody who's growing today just to be uh, mindful of what you're using. Uh, this goes for any uh, form of agriculture, whether it be tomatoes, corn, or what have you. Um, I firmly believe that we can come up with a safe synthetic fertilizer, and I also do believe that there are safer forms of organic uh, compared to perhaps more uh, what some people would refer to as dirty organics. So now, but, uh, just uh, the cannabis plant leaf structure, I've, I've noticed plants when they're in their maturity, uh, whether it be three leaves, five leaves, seven leaves, and nine leaves, uh, some of you may have noticed more. This is just from my basic brief experiences so far in this life. Um, they say there is indica, sativa, and ruderalis um, as far as the different um, species of the plant. And, you know, who knows, there may be even more than we have delineated. There are many aromas and tastes, tastes of the plant, um, from bubble gum, and literally like stuff that you'll grow if you grow it and you smell like, wow, that smells just like bubble gum, or something that smells just like Fruit Loops, or something that would smell like a mint or citrus, and then even. You know, I've sampled some uh, cannabis where even the aftertaste, if you are a uh, smoker of it, you can even taste like an aftertaste of those scents. You know, some are more pronounced than others. So it's very diverse. And then, you know, it's interesting too. I've noticed varieties that I will literally like almost be allergic to or I'll like sneeze 
but it's like, you know, it's not every variety. It's just like this particular variety here and there. So again, there's just so many varieties and particulars. Um, so the effect um, for recreation, medicinal or spiritual that you're looking for, well, that can uh, vary, you know, based on the variety. So some, of, some people may have been turned off by one variety. And if you thought that that's all there was and you didn't know there was like, thousands of different varieties, well, then you just got stuck thinking there was one variety. Um, so uses beyond smoking, eating, or smelling the flower. And I said, yes, smelling the flower. I rem there are, you know, cultures that develop of people where they would just like to, just like you smell a rose, you may like to just smell the bud. And people who would not ingest it and, and not smoke it, they would just literally like to have it around uh, like an aromatic plant. So beyond, uh, you know, those uh, smoking, eating, or smelling, uh, there is the seed that a lot of people use for nutrition. Um, it's packed with protein, they say. <laughs> I've eaten hemp products before. The hemp seed is you can be used for any, many uh, uh, food products. Uh, the fiber, as I mentioned, there's the different types of stalk. Like if stalks of the plant, if I was going to make paper or wood, I'd want to get those stalks probably that are more, th that are thicker, like the pine. You know, you can grind them down, you can make your paper, or you can make uh, pressed lumber. Like nowadays they're using trees and, and they make pressed lumber. Many of the houses uh, today in the United States and other countries are made with this, uh, they call it like OSB board. Uh, pressed lumber. Well, imagine instead of using the chopped up uh, wood, you could use the chopped up hemp stalks and you press the lumber together in a similar fashion. Okay, so where do we go from here? Today we're in, a, I'm in America and I'm on planet Earth, obviously. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, but a lot of states in America have come to the point of legalizing it in certain capacities. Um, you know, you hear out there the terms decriminalization and legalization. I, for one, call for worldwide decriminalization, as in no one is a criminal for planting a seed any more than someone planting a tomato seed or a corn seed, right? I mean, if I want to plant some seeds of hemp, cannabis, if you will, why would I be labeled as a criminal if I'm just going to be using it for any variety of uses for myself or my friends or family, you know, that's between me and those uh, the adult, uh, adult community that I would be uh, partaking with. I just want to say a quick word to all the heroes. I'm not going to name any names, but, you know, I've, through the years since I grew up in uh, cannabis culture, uh, there are many um, people who have vocalized and put their uh, freedom and life on the line to stand up and speak out for marijuana liberation and you know, a lot of the people who are enjoying the freedoms of marijuana today in many of the states, well, they're enjoying that sometimes as a result of the, um, what do you want to call it, the sacrifice that, uh, that others have made to get to that page. So I just want to say that in, in respect and in value. And of course, there are many unsung heroes behind the scenes who you would never hear or see about in the media. And so obviously, shout out to them as well. So this is just another strange... Uh, perhaps just thought of, uh, I'm not going to say origin, rather, my last name is Kenneth, okay? And when you put Kenneth together with Bush, where you get, you sort of, and you say it real fast, Kenneth Bush, Kenneth Bush, it's kind of cannabis, Kenneth Bush, it's kind of interesting. Um, and this is just the brief uh, comment on what, what I allude, uh, have memories of alluding to from other lifetimes. Um, I do remember there being a vast connection, like universally speaking, with this plant around the universe that um, maybe in life we'll, we can all learn about it together. Um, something to do with even like the brain and memories and um, I don't want to say connections, but now this is what they, uh, we'll leave it at that. There's more for me to say about that later in other uh, forums. I just want to keep this simple. So my past mistakes with the plant, um, I no longer drive while I am impaired uh, by the plant. I mean, I wouldn't, 
I don't know if you want to call it an impairment any more than you're under the influence of it, just like someone's under the influence of coffee, right? Or any other variety of substances. Um, I treat it like alcohol or anything else, prescription drugs, and I, and I say, okay, or the effects of this impairing, did it wear off? The average, when I would smoke marijuana today, the, the types of marijuana that I consume, uh, the average high may last two to three hours. So, um, you know, depending, more or less, depending on a, a low, low, lower uh, potent variety or a more potent variety. And so I gauge myself in that respect, just like if I go out and have a couple beers, I would gauge myself in that respect. One comment on the laws that, are, that I see coming into effect in, in the United States and other nations, we really need to eliminate the plant limits that you're placing on the individual citizen. Um, or else, if you don't, you are continuously and inherently fueling corruption and unfairness, uh, essentially special interest mafias. I have nothing against corporations, and in fact, I like corporations. I may own some one day. <laughs> it is just that uh, with the plant limits, you are really harming the quote-unquote, what I'm going to call the mom and the pop, just the average Joe of the day. It's very unfair, and for you not to know why, it maybe it's just you're, you don't know why, well then you need to know kind of about what I told you about all the many varieties and the, and the, the way that cannabis grows and how you cross with disease because you're allowing these corporations uh, to, to grow literally thousands of plants and they can come up with their prized varieties and they can sort of corner the market as like, this is like a stage where the price is going to drop significantly. I mean, we've already seen the price come down in states where it's legalized. So the people who like get in on it and corner the market are the ones that are going to kind of be the Marlboros or the camels of the future. So why wouldn't you allow that to be open to everybody in a fair, equal system? I mean, this has been a long trail of prohibition, which should not have existed. And so, I mean, I even see it like, you know, you should be able to grow out. If you want to grow out a hundred plants in your backyard and maybe you come with a to a prize variety that maybe the average Joe will sell to the corporation. He's like, well, you know what? I don't really want to get into marketing or selling, but I'll sell that prize to variety to the corporation. And so I want that to be open for all the people. And that's just how I look at it. Just one other caution in closing here. With all the changes taking place, be careful with the impurities and the tinctures and oils and stuff that are out there. You know, and these other things that they call shatter or dabs, I personally have not used those things. I, I'm aware of them. Or these propane combinations that they have or whatever the hell they are, butane. <laughs> it sounds pretty crazy to me, right? Like, why would you want to taint your product by adding that stuff? But that, apparently, some of you like that now. So I'm not against that if you're, that's your choice. Just like, you know, any drug of choice where you're not wrongly infringing upon someone else, if you want to consume that, that's your decision. My best advice is to grow your own stone. That's an old slogan. Um, or know from a trusted source where you're getting your, you know, your product. Again, I believe in safe synthetic growing methods as well as safe organic. You know, safety can be relative in some respects. But however, I think people uh, know what I mean by that. So thank you for your time today. Uh, Sorry I'm not better spoken or what have you, and this is just a basic uh, review of what I have come to up to this point in the 21st century, uh, April 2018. Thank you for your time and have a great day. One other end note that I want to seriously make a comment on. People who have been criminalized, who have not corrupted minors, who have not wrongly infringed upon anybody else. I am a stern uh, proponent, advocate for reparations for those individuals. The amount of reparations would have to be determined. But if you think about it in this context, if you took someone out of their life and you threw them in prison, you ruined their finances, you ruined their family and friend structures, um, just the stress and trauma you put upon someone. Maybe you even threw them in with violent offenders. You take a non-violent 
peaceful cannabis culture person and you throw them in with violent offenders, well, that's pretty gross and disgusting, right? That's, so anyways, I just want to say that for what it is. And so that's the road that I'm on for the rest of my life. I will be um, striving to uh, not only get this plant decriminalized, however, um, do my best to get to a place of where reparations can be given to those, again, nonviolent and uh, people who did not corrupt minors. And uh, just to be very clear, people who are just, just like they're having a cup of coffee or they're smoking a tobacco cigarette or they're drinking a beer. It's the same thing. And so that's the road that I'm on. And I just want to say that very sternly here in this closing point. Thanks and hope and great peace.